My humble pranams at the lotus feet of our Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba and Om Sai Ram, dearest embodiments of love. In gratitude to Swami for giving us this opportunity to present this offering. I am Brother Shen, and next to me is um, Sister uh, uh, Aradz, who is um, currently the Vice President of the um, Durban region. I welcome uh, Sister Aradz. Um, Mr. Sister Raz has, um, has uh, served in the organization for many years and, and her experiences uh, are just amazing. Um, Sister Raz, please can you share a little bit about yourself and your personal interests? I have a pronounced the Lotus Feet of all the clients. He said yes, I have a whole sign up. Thank you, Brother Michelle. Um, I think my, my journey with Swami started when I was born into a disciple. I'm uh, privileged to be a part of the side journey from the age of one. Swami has given me many opportunities, um, many lessons in my path. Um, and you know, like I said, we started in the It wasn't really into it because at that time there wasn't so much of, of um, Swami's organizations or centers around at that point in time like they are right now. But there was a small group that started. So being part of it, my parents were very privileged to have been on the plane with Swami in 1979 when we went to India. They both were blessed by Swami, given Darshan at that time. And I think there was reasons for that because they went through a difficult path thereafter. And I think when you go through difficulties, you understand where you come from um, and why he does the things that he does. So being part of that, we moved to a film um, and we started to engage with Bobby as myself. I started at 10, at the age of 10. And, and I think I always remember where the guru at that time gave us um, Swami's pet, you know, rose petals with Amrit and, and Vibhuti. And I used to always wonder how can we eat one of them? But it tasted so amazing that it made me go back to Balbikas, you know, it, it was something that you learn every day. And that's where I grew my teachings, but it wasn't a centre present at that time in the film. So we ended up going to 10 uh, services at that time. And then we slowly started to engage in work, but we still faster did all the necessary. My dad was somebody that always went into um, in, into Seva. He would always cook food, share with the individual, always giving out and help with whatever he needed to do in his own personal capacity. And I think that's where we grew, always serving unconditionally. Okay. Uh, and then I started in, well, actively in the side organization about 20 years ago. But you know, Adam Peel was there. But in that time, um, I think being with Swami, he's, he's helped me through such a difficult time when I lost my mom, my dad, uh, and my younger brother who was 28 in a space of seven years. So we've always wanted to go to India. But you know, he says, you come to my abode when you are ready. And I think he knew that I was going through a difficult time or I was about to go through because the responsibilities changed and there was so much more to do. Um, my dad was blinded by diabetes and I used to always tell him, dad, let's go to India. So always speciality in hospital is there, you know. Um, otherwise, if you don't want my eyes, then somebody there can give you your you know, an eye. And I used to always worry about him. I do miss him. Um, there's days that I wish that he was here, you know, for his guidance. But yeah, the guidance comes from the children. Um, and then from there on, I got actively involved in the centre. We started in Hunting Hill Side Centre. And then we ended up in Durban region as such, because they had sort of restructure. Um, and then we well, used to still go, be a part of the activities and what not have you. And then I started to engage. Um, I became the center ladies convener at that point in time. From there on, I became the regional ladies convener. Um, loved it because it was engaging with sisters that grew us spiritually, emotionally, and um, using our, our creativity at the same time. So we learned so much together as a team. And just to share one experience with you, I think I'm going past the question, but you know, we had study circles. My first study circle was 
something where um, with the ladies we had to do. It was a very nice topic. I can't remember the topic offhand, but it was just four people that attended, and I was so despondent because I've attended all the other study circles, and there were more devotees in the in in, in the study circle than mine. And, they said, could it be me? And we had a study circle with the four sisters that were there. And the, the center president at that time, Sister Palm, passed on. She called me and she said, I saw you were despondent. And she said, yeah, I'm sorry. And I said, sister, no, don't be. The people that are here are supposed to be there because it's a message that came out of this lesson for them and for yourself. The same as with us as girls. When we teach our body as children and there's no one there, we're supposed to continue the lesson because it's a lesson that you prepared. The form is waiting for you to continue. So there's a lesson for yourself as well at the end of the day. So I always remember it's quality more than quantity at the end of the day. And we take out so much more. So when we have engagements with Swami, we don't tell you about how many people are there. But the people that are there are supposed to be the people that have uh, a take on what we're supposed to offer in that, in, in that offering. Mm, so we are so important in that. And then we are now the Vice President of the region. But I, I still love to be a part of the team, be part of all that we do. It, it, it makes me share my teaching with Swami and, and my journey with him. Uh, and you're not aged by the number. So <laughs> being with young adults really makes me feel like I'm still a youngster at that time. And in my journey, when I was in the uh, Telugu community, we part also started the young adults group at that point in time. So I understand how the young adults work and how they feel and how they want to be a part of growing and transforming in every which way. So I think that's very important yeah. as well, yes. yes. In your time serving at Tommy's Lotus Feet, what has been the most memorable opportunities that you've been a part of? Well, they were. Beautiful memories over the years, mm. and I think my journey started. Well, it started on the day I was born, but I think more the realization started is when my mom died, um, where I realized that I would lose her legacy that she left for us. And if I didn't follow in her footsteps and continue serving and nurturing and, and, and engaging with my own children in, in so many teachings, then I wouldn't be doing um, justice to them as a parent. In the side world, you know, that's where it starts. It starts with us as, as parents. So engaging them with having them to go to Bali class. And um, we were privileged to have Sister Germany in our in our seven, in our complex to teach them. They loved it every day. And I think everything that they did <coughs> was always from his teachings. You know, when, when she taught them a lesson on um, being the planet and how Mother Nature and Mother Earth is being depleted and what we should do. I tell you, up till now, my son still go looking for ozone free friendly uh, underarm sprays and sprays for themselves because that's how they in tune they are with her teachings from the time she was taught. So that that is also part of the journey that I started, um, and also going publicly when we started interacting and being part of the 2010 Ubuntu. I think that was the most memorable. You know, as I as said earlier, my story started where we said we wanted so many times to go to India. And so he always tells you when it's his time, he'll bring you. No matter how many arrangements it comes to, you come to the day and then you can't. It's, it's in his work. It's always at his work. He always say leave everything at his lotus feet. Yes. And nothing moves without his work. Well. None, none of the play the ground. So it was his time because we went through such a difficult period. And I think he knew that difficult period was there. My family needed that support. And going in 2010 to, to India um, and being part of the Ubuntu was amazing. You know, there's so many special moments, but I think that will always yellow in us because we were at practice, we met so many different devotees that we haven't met for years. The love, the energy that was there, um, each person shared so much in, in, in there. You know, and, and you look forward to every weekend, every time that you were there together. And being in the board, okay, we had our challenges when we got there. We got there late, we, our, our accommodation was so bad. <laughs> we were sitting in the space where I think they put in those little coils, you know, those things for the for the smell. And they just did the oil painting. It was really, really difficult. Like, why was trying to go and find us accommodation? But we, we got into the meeting at that time. We missed Swami's first session and we believed he came out. And you know, we were told that he only comes out at special times. Yes. But it was the most amazing time that we were there. We were part of the kitchen. We went in for kitchen work. And I wouldn't believe it, Uncle Mine, for the first time. I think Swami allowed him with shorts. He already didn't get into the kitchen with shorts and he got called back and then he had to put on his pants. But he also, he had experiences in there, I could tell you quickly. Just, he was making Swami's beautiful porridge. We all love to eat when we in the canteen. And I think when he was helping them to pick it up, um, it fell on his arm. Oh, and I tell you, he just screamed out Swami's name, but I promise you, after that, he thought his entire flesh was coming up. 
But he actually, um, Swami had protected him, I think, at that time. You know? wow. Being in his abode, he's protecting everybody. Yes. So he, he's not like you get protected and I don't. He's there for everybody. And when he wiped himself out, he obviously thought he was going to see the flesh, but it was nothing. It was only that he healed him. And it was boiling hot from, from the pot, you know. So, uh, And then he got darshan, and I think that was amazing for him. And, and, you know, if you listen to his story, he'll tell you his part of it. But we didn't even know he got darshan at that time. But that was one of them. And, but, but being there to see Swami every day, morning and evening, was something that I think he made up for the times that he did allow us to come there because of the, the challenges that we had. But being there was just amazing. Um, kids had their own leaders. Myself as well. And when I came back to tell a friend of mine, she said to me, but I dreamt Swami gave you darshan. Wow. And I said, how did you do that? She said, no, it came in my dream. I said, are you sure? And I was like, Swami, but maybe you did give me darshan. When you gave my husband darshan, I received your darshan, you know. But he told her to tell me, I assume, at that time. So there were many leaders that came through. But these were always embedded in my in my head. Um, and you know, when we came to COVID, we all sit at home, continued with service on a normal basis. Every day we'd sit in front of the TV, we'd do our arati as a family together. Yes. And I think the one time I was questioning something and then he looked at me and then I asked a question and I didn't realize he was listening to me and I looked up and then he put his head like this to tell me like, hey, I heard you, what did you say? You know, those are, those are things that he always shows you that he's there. The other day I was telling a story to uh, one of the sisters and I said, I was busy doing my, my lab work at that time and I didn't have a dot on and I said, okay, so I'll do it. But I got so busy with so many things while doing it. I, I set her down for prayer and at the time I was saying to her, it's Chinese because we don't have a venue. So yeah. I was at, um, so we had satsang at home. Yes. And I said, I'll go get a, a dear just now. So sitting on my sofa and on the corner of my sofa, there was a little air drop and I said, oh no, did my husband make a mess? You know, something's all with the kids dropping. But I cleaned up, I knew I cleaned up. Yes. And then I go and I touch it and I see, oh my God, that's a dot. But I'm in my sitting room and I'm generally my job, so all in my room and there was a dot, I think Swami had left for me. So I put it on and I said, thank you Swami, because <laughs> I forgot it, you know. So it's all these little small things that make up for him. But I think in the greater scheme of things, there was a lot of things that I've been through. Uh, apart from losing my parents, we've been through a difficult patch ourselves. But we never lost his faith, you know, he held that's, our hand. He, that's most important, yes. Yes, he, he held our hand. He, he, he never failed to um, make us realize that he's there. By bringing through so many brothers and sisters, you know, you have, I had my family that also supported me. But having this side family, like, you know, you always have a group of family that says, that is another family to you, not mm. by blood, but by heart. And they were always there to support you and encourage you. And that is his way to say, I'm here, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm making your burdens a little lighter by having these people with you and I'm cushioning you from what could be worse. And I think gratitude every day is so important, you know, to be grateful that we're part of his journey. Um, and I think to be, if I have to be reborn, I'd still walk on the same path without the shadow of doubt. Thank you, Sister. That's, that's amazing experiences. You tell me, living in this present Kali Yuga age, and with all the current challenges we're facing in South Africa, what are some practical spiritual uh, tips that you can share with the devotees to strengthen their connection with Swami? You know, the Kali has been here for a while. It's so prevalent. I think every day we experience it. But you know, Swami is not a product. He's not an entity. He is the beginning and he is the end. You know, we start the day, that's why he's given us morning prayer and evening prayer. He asks us to surrender everything that he is on to feet. And we must be able to do that. We must be able to use his teachings in our daily lives. And he gave us so more now. Being part of this Kali we need to engage more in our personal sadhanas. Constantly keep his name at, at the tip of our tongue wherever we go. Yes. And you know, just to share with my experience in working, I was blessed in, in, in my corporate world to have devotees that were of Swami's teaching, Swami in, in, in the organization, being part of, of management. My manager was a side devotee, and a few times ago I was still there, he'd bring out Swami's picture with the lingam on it, and he'd hold it to my chest and he'd pray, and he'd, wow. and he'd, and he'd, you know, he'd recite the battery mantra. And ever since then, I realized that Swami will always there for me. You know, he sh we, we always say, surrender as Swami's feet. But we, we too hasty. We want the questions now. And for me, I used to do that. And I learned the most difficult way. And, and for me, my answers used to come through my children, through my husband. But I always say, no, 
what do you all know, you know? Swami said in this, it's like a, a little story I always tell everybody, where this gentleman was, um, it was flood during, uh, in India, and he was, this one uh, devotee was stuck on a tree, and he said, Swami, please save me. So, so everybody went past, the board went past, somebody sent him a stick. And every time somebody did something for me, he'll say, no, Swami's coming to save me, Swami's coming to save me. So he drowned, and he met Swami, he asked Swami, but why didn't you save me? He said, I sent so many people past him to save me, but you didn't take it for me. So, you know, being in this country, you we need to understand that he's sending people, he's sending things to you, he's sending teachings, he's sending experiences for you to grow in his organization. Yes. If we don't use that in our daily life, be it in corporate, be it in the organization, how are we going to overcome this career? Yes, we need to fervently have it to the tip of our tongue, like we say. Speak here, speak. He speaks to us. Every day, invoke his presence with you, wherever you go, whatever you do. And he will carry you through all the difficult challenges you do. So we must understand that. We're going to face challenges. It's not going to be easy time. We just came out of COVID. And people are still overcoming all the challenges yes. that they face. So it's important for us to constantly engage. And, and uh, everybody's journey is different. Yes. But we can't challenge each person's journey. We've got to be there to support each one. We've got to share the, the teachings of Swami. And, and by doing that, we're engaging in our spiritual journey going forward. You know, we used to do before, it's called self-audit every week that you need to do. And I think a lot of us forget about it. So we need to do the self-audit and also be grateful in every week what we've done. We must always ask ourselves, what have we done differently in this week? How can we go forward in our Sadhana? How can we assist? And I think our personal assistance to devotees or any individual out there is our transformation. You know, sometimes we sit and we read, um, but we're also not using everything that Swami teaches us. But when we start engaging unknowingly, that's when your transformation starts. For me, that's where we start. We are the servants of the servants. We absolutely the servants yes. of Swami. And, and that's what He wants us to do. So we need to engage in, in growing our spirituality in this career because that's the only way we're going to overcome. Um, all the bad, and you can experience it every day is a challenge. And I don't think anybody anywhere can say they haven't been through a challenge. Yes. And, and nobody knows it all because there's no right or wrong answer in Swami's organization. You do the best with everything that you can do. Yes. So I teach my, my father because children to take one prayer, just one prayer that comfortable with. You know, there's so many sadhanas you can do. And then we're not, it's useless we're sitting there for 30 minutes and doing everything, and we're not engaging. And it's not invoking us in, in the day that we're going through. So we need to ensure that we take one one prayer. Yes. Be it the Gaiji Mantra, be it your own class of Prabhupada. But do it to 100% that you feel comfortable, you feel fulfilled, and then you start your journey in that day, every day. That's the only way we're going to overcome the journey. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So Swami says, be happy, be happy, be happy. Do you have any lighthearted experiences um, to share from your journey in the organization? So let's start by saying look at strong faces. <laughs> we always have to smile, be happy, you know, in whatever situation. And I think for me, my mom used to always say, um, I think a little bit older generation when they come and I say this, is that we always say in our homes, when you're having a difficult period, you don't show the world what's happening in your home. So you always smile. And then you become so in tune with it that it does, but you know, you forget that you also have a heart full of uh, aches and stuff. But, being happy, and that is what Swami says, when I lost my parents, my brother, and your life that you live every day as though it's your last. Enjoy every moment. Devil in his teachings, love one and all, serve one and all. Yes. Never ever ever fear when I am here. And you go on the day knowing that, don't let anything put you down in any part of your day. And I think being part of all the young adults makes me still feel a part of the youth. Um, it makes me resonate with them when I was youth and I still feel that I still want to be there. So it's, it's also the energy that they create and they carry and um, and it's good for me because my, my kids are also like that, you know. They are my voice of reason. Um, we share, we laugh, we enjoy. Um, and Uncle Mine is the best storyteller in my house. So if you need stories being told, he can tell you. And, and it's just being happy and I think it starts in your own home. Yes. You, you know, when you have that love and that communication and that energy in home, then you find it, it, it exudes and it shows to the rest of the world. Yes. And that's where we need to start with. We need to start at home and anything begins at home. And, and it begins with yourself as well. 100%, exactly. You know, you've got to start with yourself. You've got to love yourself. That's what they say. Love yourself before you love the world. Yes. And then when you show it, it, it's so natural. It just comes part of your life. It is. And it's so important that we need to do it. So, so Swami also says happiness 
is a union with God. Absolutely, yes. it is. And that's why we take his name every day. Yes. Wake up with it, go to bed with it. Gratitude, Swami, everything that you do for me. And leave it at his feet. Mm -hmm. Learn to surrender. And that was difficult for me. But yes, I did. <laughs> In so many ways. And he sends you messages. Um, and then he shows you how to be happy. You know, we, we must be happy. And so, so that's, um, uh, you mentioned the young elves and, and how you like to be a part of them. Um, the young elves are often told that uh, we are the future of the organization. What would be your advice in keeping young elves focused um, as they serve in Swami's uh, divine mission? Yeah, our young adults are amazing. Absolutely. I keep calling them children every time I see them because I've got two young adults myself, you know. So I, I believe that you you start to like I said, start your day with some of his teachings. Um, use his teachings every day. We're gonna face challenges like we just discussed. We you know, we're in the Kali Yuk, which is the most difficult part here. Hold on to his teachings family. Be the best version of yourself using his teachings. Don't forget where you are, where you want to be. You know, we got to understand that when you inculcate his teachings into your life, you automatically use that in your corporate life, you know. But when you come into the organization, we, use, we leave all our corporate entities out of the circle. And we're one part of the family. So engaging with youth, encouraging them to be in every, everything, uh, but it's also the opportunities you create for them. You got to understand that they are the leaders, like we said. We, we need to nurture them in every aspect of our lives, be there to support them. And I think for them, they need the, um, the mother in us to be on the same level with them and understand the way they are and where they're going. And always be there to, to support, you know, like a shoulder to cry on, the mother, you know, you're like your normal mom if they're not around, to be there to, to nurture you in the direction that you want to go. But keeping to Swami's teachings, uh, engaging uh, using his five human values, yes. you know, uh, always to be, to do, to see, to tell. And I think leadership is so important that you must be a leader that leads by example. Yes. So when you see, like how you do at work, if you see a manager that's excelling, you want to be just like him. You see a, a devotee, even if it's a normal devotee, you know, we don't have to have titles because we all want in Swami's organization. When we pass on, we're all going into the same room, majority of we're all going to be bound on the same, no discrimination between anybody. And I think we need to hold on to his teaching so tightly now going forward because we all need each other at the end of the day. Um, so we need to grow together and we need to nurture each other. Yes. But you all need to sit together as a team and understand that your path is here. This is where you're going to take on when we are not around. You all need to engage with the young adults, be there for each other because each one's going through a difficult time. And COVID would have shown us that. COVID's taught us so much that we need to understand Everybody is different in their journey, like we said before, and we need to be there to guide them along this path. Yes. There's no right or wrong answer, and there's never a no in any question that they ask. We must make a plan to assist and accommodate wherever we can. Be there, use the Lean Army program that we've created yes. to be there and buddy up with somebody that you feel is not there. Like yesterday, I was watching devotee, um, and I feel I felt an energy that I know that there's some something not right with the, with the devotee. And I had a chat with somebody and I said, let's just engage with the person and see how best we can help. And I think that's what we need to do. But yeah, don't bring anybody down. And I think that's what we, we must stop doing. We must start picking people up, bringing them into the fold, taking them according to all our opportunities and all our offerings because we create such beautiful uh, um, love and unity in that. And we're looking for that love and unity uh, and togetherness is what people need right now and yes. what youngsters need at the, at the moment. So that's important. So yeah, we grow together and we grow all together. That's the most important. So it's amazing. Mr. So, Sadas, so thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for your experiences. You. And thank you to Swami for allowing us to um, uh, share these experiences uh, with the devotees. Om Sarah. Thank you so much.